Hello everyone this is professor DK and welcome back to another episode of the home automation app series the first video i released got a lot of appreciation and all of you wanted me to do this video series so thank you all for that i know it's been a month since the last video and i always promise to release videos every week but uh, since this isn't my daily job i always have some of the other commitments and uh, hence uh, every time something goes amiss okay but uh, I need uh, all of you to know that uh, I like doing this and hence that is what keeps me coming back to post new video irrespective of uh, the many other things that I do and uh, hope you all appreciate that fact and uh, we recently crossed 1 million views uh, and uh, 10k subscribers so thank you guys for supporting me and uh, encouraging me for always creating new content so hope you like this video too and make sure you subscribe if you are new here so without wasting any more any more time let's jump into the video okay so as i mentioned in the previous video that uh, we'll be dividing this video series into three sections right so this is the plan which i have for this video series as you can see here so firstly we'll be uh, talking about the recycler view i'll introduce you to it i'll explain what it is and then we'll look at how we'll implement it in android studio the layout and also the java code behind it and once we have done that so we'll have an app which is working but then it won't look cool right so to make sure that we improve the user experience and also the design we'll jump into the next part which will basically you know help you understand how we can design our own custom backgrounds or even you know uh, animations on each of the button clicks okay so that will be the second section and in the final section so we'll be looking into the hardware which is required to implement this and uh, once we have everything connected and wired up we can have the app work in conjunction with the hardware which finally leads us to the final section which is the demo so this is what google defines as a recycler view it's a flexible view for providing a limited window into a large data set now this is a plain simple definition and this does not tell you or as uh, i can imagine most of you have blank faces there and you're wondering what am i speaking here right so to make it easier i have you know created this image which will help you understand what recycler view actually does so before you can understand recycler view you need to understand the list view because recycler view is basically an advanced version of the list view now for those of you who have watched my previous video series so you will know that i used to implement a lot of list views in my layout right so what a list view does is when you have a limited data set so limited data set is the number of you know list items that you have in the list right so when you have a large number of them and uh, if you want to allocate memory it becomes really hard because in list view what happens is based on the number of items that you have each of the items gets allocated a memory and when you have a large data set it exhausts that memory and hence the phone when you interact with the phone it lags and hence it won't lead to a good user experience so that is why we have this concept of recycler view so how is it different from the list view so as you can see here so the blue the dark blue areas here basically represent the active and allocated areas so active by active i mean that these are the areas which are seen on the screen right so the recycler view has an adapter similar to the adapter which was present uh, in the list view right so this adapter has the functionality of allocating memory of uh, to make sure that it doesn't exhaust the memory right so how does it do that so here i have placed blocks of memory so uh let each of these uh, list item basically represent a block of memory right so when you swipe up so let's imagine that you're swiping up so when you swipe up there are new elements which need to be allocated memory and hence you can see that uh this is being allocated memory here so the adapter basically allocates memory to the new items which are coming into the active region and what it does to the previous uh, uh memory is so when you swipe up the list views which go out of the screening area so uh, the topmost will get you know disabled 
basically it gets deallocated and that memory is used to allocate a new uh, list item right so this basically uh, also happens when you swipe down so instead of uh, this being deallocated this uh, area gets deallocated and it's assigned here so that's how the recycling process happens and uh, that's what the name basically means it's a recycler view so based on the number of elements so the you can just assume that at the top most two elements get allocated memory and the bottom two most get allocated memory which are outside the active screening area and whenever they get called so each new block gets allocated memory based on the requirement and that is uh, allocated memory by basically deallocating a previously existing memory which goes out of the screening area okay so hope you all have understood recycler view and uh, hopefully this sets the context for our video so uh, let's jump into android studio to see how the how this thing can be implemented okay so let's go ahead and create a new android project so here i'm going to name it as home automation app and uh, you can click on next and uh, we will be choosing uh, the minimum SDK version as API 16 so anything above Jelly Bean will be able to run this app so click on phone and tablet and everything else will be on default and next, click on next so we will be choosing an empty activity so click on next and wait for the gradle to build once you have you know given the name for an empty activity which will be main activity I do not want to change that click on finish so let's wait for uh, the gradle to complete building and uh, I'll fast forward to that two hours later okay so the gradle build has finished successfully so I'm just gonna open up uh, all the things here so we have the manifest file the java files the layouts and finally the gradle scripts okay so here we have the main activity.java opened up but if you do not have it open you can just right click on this and it's going to open that up so uh, in the activity main you see that we have this default hello world already there you can just go ahead and remove that so we need to add the recycler view here so uh, before that i'm just going to go ahead and add the toolbar so for the width I'm just going to use match parent and for the height I'm going to use the attribute slash action bar action bar size okay so that's going to give the size of the action bar and obviously it's going to need some id so that we can reference it in the java file so at id so let's call this as toolbar main okay so we have given it an id and uh, next we'll go ahead and uh, you can either you know uh, write the recycler view here or you could just go ahead to the design and add the recycler view so whichever is easier so you can go ahead and do that so I'm just gonna so here uh, the recycler view is present in our palette but then you see that it has a download option beside it so what this says is this operation requires a library to be added so this is basically the recycler view library which needs to be added so uh, there are two ways to doing this right so when you click on this you can either click on ok and it will get uh, added automatically or another way is to basically go to the build.gradle file and uh, not here sorry this is the main so you need to go to the app level gradle file where all the dependencies are present so i'm just going to show you that here you do not see any implementation where it says that uh, where the dependency has any recycler view in it so i'm just going to click on uh, ok here and uh, it will sync the gradle file and you will see that it will get added automatically here okay so that is what it is doing basically so as simple as that so let's wait for uh, the library to get added And until it builds so if you ask me which version of Android Studio I'm running so I'm running on Android Studio 3.1.3 I guess uh, 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 at, the t at the time of making this video uh, there was 3.2 uh, release so 
uh, if you are on that uh, do not worry maybe i will uh, jump uh, onto that in the next video so uh, in today's video we will be using this version so if you are on the newer version do not worry but if you are on the older version make sure that uh, you jump to the 3.1 android studio series because uh, we have had some major changes right so uh, let's uh, get back to the main thing here so we have successfully built the gradle file so now you can see the recycler view being added here so you can just go ahead and uh, uh, drop it into the layout here i see that i have the toolbar and the recycler view added but uh, i can see the action bar so that is because of uh, i forgot to remove it from the styles.xml file so you can go over to resources values files.xml styles.xml and you can just type in no action bar and that will remove the action bar so you should see it disappear here but i think we have some problems so what it says is missing constraints in the constraint layout okay so it says that we are not constrained so let's just do that and let's see if we are able to so i've constrained it okay this is becoming harder when i start i don't know why it's acting strange okay so i have the it's constrained my mouse is acting fishy today okay so i've uh, constrained it below the toolbar okay so i've constrained it on all four sides and uh, now the error is no longer seen okay so no problems there and i still don't know why it's not removing the action bar okay so let me let me constrain the toolbar on all four sides all right so but then constraining it on the left and the right i see that it gives a small amount of space so uh, anyways let's go to okay this is quite irritating you know what i'm just going to switch to relative layout because uh, it's kind of you know simple and i hate doing this uh, constrain thing so uh, i'm switched over to relative layout it has changed here and at the top so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this entire recycle view and uh, let me just remove the toolbar as well i'm just going to okay i'm just going to remove the things which got added so i'm just going to remove it until the layout height okay so we have this here and i'm going to click on design and now i'm going to go ahead and add the recycle view and uh, now what i'm going to do is i'm going to position it below the toolbar so for that we will use the parameters layout below uh layout below and uh, the id is this e toolbar main right so it will be placed below the toolbar and uh, we basically do not want it to have any margin from the bottom so basically it will be wrap content the height of the recycler view so it will be wrap content and uh, should see it covering the entire space below the toolbar all right so uh, we have uh, created the layout but for some reason this action bar seems to not go okay so let me know if uh, you have also removed it from the styles and you're still seeing it there so i don't understand why that's happening but anyways uh, so that should go naturally um, so once we have created the layout so next thing that we need to do is basically assign the id for this relative layout right so I assign the id for the toolbar as toolbar main and for the recycler view we'll call it as uh, recycler main okay 
so this is basically the recycler view and the toolbar so let's just go ahead to the main activity and define these two data elements so uh, firstly we have added the toolbar so private toolbar so make sure that when you add the toolbar uh, you select the right version so there are two toolbars so one is the android.widget and the other one is android.support.v7.widget so make sure you sub choose the v7 one and let's call this toolbar and uh, next we have the recycler view so let's define that and we'll call it as recycler view itself all right so let's just create a new function to initialize all these views so private init ui views and inside this so make sure you add the return type which is void so it's not going to be returning anything so we need to assign the toolbar with its corresponding id so r dot id dot toolbar main and next we have the recycler view find view by id r dot recycler r dot id dot recycler view why isn't it showing up okay so I've given the ID and let's make it Okay, that's strange. Dot ID dot recycler view. Why isn't it showing up? Okay, let me check. I have the ID being added here, but for some reason, not able to see it in the Java file. I don't know. Today, everything is fishy. I don't know, man. I don't even know what's happening firstly I try to remove the action bar and that doesn't go away and now I'm trying to add an ID which I've already provided but Android doesn't seem to recognize that so let's just uh, you know I'll call it was recycler main right so I'm just gonna keep it as recycler main here whatever we have defined recycler main and uh, now what we'll do is inside the on create we need to call this so init ui view okay so we have basically uh, designed the layout and created uh, and initialized the two uh, elements now uh, for each of the recycler view uh, we need for the recycler view we basically need to create a single item which basically uh, is the layout for each of the single item present here right so for that we are like I do in all the other videos we go ahead and create a single item element right so for that go over to layout and uh, click on new layout resource file and let's call this as recycler main recycler underscore main underscore single item alright so that will help us recognize which uh, activity it is uh, linked to okay so i have the recycler main single item and uh, next so again it says compilation errors so uh, i'm seeing that i am having a lot of problems so uh, if you guys also uh, have android uh, you know troubling you like this when you know you are not doing anything wrong then the best thing that you can do is do a clean project okay so uh, this is one of the things that I do when I see that Android Studio is acting strange so this is one tip which you need to know and uh, probably all of you are laughing out there seeing the troubles that I'm facing here so uh, the struggle is real guys for making the video uh, yeah it gets hectic sometimes and especially when you do not want to do a retake after all the work that I put in so it's sometimes horrible okay so let's hope that it works this time and uh, uh, it's 
taking time so okay so do let me know if you want me to tell you anything uh, during the video whenever i do a, a gradle sync when some compilation is happening so when i have that free time let me know what you want to know about me and uh, you know you can just uh, ask some questions and maybe i'll answer that whenever i have some free time which i get in the video all right so uh, maybe just uh, had a handle maybe use the handle ask dk and uh, then you know post your question and so during the video i'll just take out your name and then answer your question so let's do that all right so we have done a rebuild of the project and now you can see that uh, the action bar has gone right so that is exactly what i wanted and uh, it wasn't happening right so after the clean build uh, the action bar is gone and everything is working as uh, is working as desired but uh, here it says that this project contains java compilation errors which can cause rendering failures for custom views fix co fix compilation problems first so i don't know what it's talking about but uh, you can see that even in the main activity the id which it said wasn't recognized so it's now recognized okay so doing a clean uh, doing so doing a clean build basically fixes all those errors and uh, uh, let's see what this error is but uh, anyways uh, I, I hope it will get fixed soon so let's forget that and go ahead and uh, add the different elements so what are the different elements that we need to add here so let me just open up the thumbnail of the previous video so that has the layout so as you can see here hopefully it's clear so uh, it basically has this card view and uh, it has the image view embedded inside it and then we have two different text views all right so we'll uh, we'll replicate the same thing here so firstly we need to add the card view so we we'll need to search that so card view and you can see that again the card view is present as a downloadable object so you can just click on that and when you click on okay this will get added into your gradle uh, file and uh, the gradle sync will be in progress okay so it is this time i'm talking about where you can ask me uh, where i'll be answering your questions so make sure you uh, you know use the handle ask dk and ask me any questions it can be personal it can be technical so whatever you want but technical you will anyway ask it in the comments below so maybe you can ask me something personal okay so let's do that so that will you know spice up the video uh, and it will not make it boring hopefully and uh, did you guys notice that you know my voice is somewhat clearer than before and uh, that's because i just purchased uh, a decent microphone and you know hopefully it reduces all the background noise that you used to hear so yeah so that's the upgrade that i have to my you know kit okay so we have uh, the card view added so i'm just going to drag and drop the card view and uh, we can you know set parameters here but uh, you know, i'm just gonna go over to text and uh, we are gonna use the layout width as match parent and the layout height as match parent and uh, again this is gonna throw errors because it's constant layout and uh, let me just change it to relative layout so i'm not saying constraint layout is bad but every time you need to constrain it and that might be irritating at times so that's why i prefer to jump over to relative layout whenever i do not have patience so i'm just gonna call this card view as card view main and uh, we need to open up the tag here so we need to have uh, elements embedded into this so that's why i'm just going to you know type this again here outside and inside this so make sure that when you're typing you see that see that you're typing inside the tag you know i don't know how to explain this but yeah you should basically uh, type inside this right so don't type inside before this arrow mark here so make sure you type inside it and uh, you need to add an image view so for that 
just type in image view and uh, we're just gonna give it a height and width of 75 and 75 dp okay one is to one okay next uh, i'm gonna give it an id so let's call this as um, appliance appliance image maybe appliance logo okay let's call it appliance logo okay and uh, next thing that i want is a text view so the text view will be match parent and wrap content and the content is basically the appliance name right so i'm just gonna give it a default name for now but it'll get changed later programmatically so uh, at runtime so you need not worry about that so let's call this as appliance name and uh, next we, i'm just gonna copy this paste it and i'm gonna call this as i'm gonna name this as number of devices okay and uh, let's now give it an id so let's call this as appliance name make sure you name it properly so i'm going to use appliance underscore name and for the other text view i'm, I'm going to call it as um, appliance underscore number <coughs> Alright, so we have uh, created the layout and let's see how it looks. As you can see, it looks all, uh, you know, if you can see that, first of all, okay. So it is all crowded into this one particular place. So that's because I have not, you know, provided any sort of uh, relation between the elements. So I want this to be aligned below this, right. So for that, we need to add in a layout below and whoa okay so yeah right so it won't work so uh, you can take a quick guess so you can take a quick guess at why this is not allowing me to type layout below so that is because i have the card view you know inside the relative layout so this becomes my main parent and inside the card view it doesn't have the option uh, for me to add the layout below so what I'll do is I'll just inside the card view I'm gonna add the linear layout so linear layout match parent wrap content and in linear layout you need to know that there are two kinds of linear layout so one is the vertical linear layout and one more is horizontal so by default it is vertical so whatever I place inside this will be basically stacked one below the other so uh, I'm just gonna copy all the three elements I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna paste it all right so okay so it's saying that no orientation is specified default is horizontal so we'll just provide the orientation and let's call this as vertical okay I thought it was by default but anyway so we need to set it so we have set it as vertical and uh, the design you can see that now uh, we have the image view we have the appliance name and the number of devices all right so uh, this is uh, you know cling to the edge of the card view so we'll need to provide some sort of a margin and also some distance between these elements so uh, what i'm going to do is add a margin top as 10 dp and a margin left as 10 dp and i'm gonna add margin bottom or actually i'm just gonna leave it i'm just gonna add margin top to the bottom element okay so you can see here that i have this highlighting which says that consider adding margin star 10 dp okay so this is required basically when you have uh, older versions of phones and you want uh, them to be supported so that's when you add margin start because uh, this basically makes it backward compatible up to the lower versions 
so that is something you can add if you are if you you know have a lower android version phone all right so uh, that is that and we'll be giving the same I noticed that I have added it to the linear layout which I do not want. So I am just going to cut it and I thought I was pasting it for the image view. So for the image view I am just going to paste that. And uh, now what I am going to do is you know, basically copy the same thing and paste it over to the other text view and I am going to repeat it. And I think it's slightly, it's too much but anyways. So here. You can see that it has a spacing at the top and at the left, but for the bottom most, since we have only added top and the uh, top and the left one, it is uh, it doesn't have any spacing with the bottom. So I'm just gonna add margin bottom, and that's also gonna be 10 dp. 10 dp is slightly higher, but you know it's up to you. You can add uh, whatever you want. So this is basically the card view. And uh, instead of match parent, you can see that here uh, the card view basically is occupying the entire thing. Basically, this extra space where we do not have anything. So that's not what we want. We just want it to wrap around this content. So the card view height will be wrap content. All right. So you can see that the card view now only wraps around this. So also we want to have a some kind of elevation which distinguishes or maybe you know makes it look slightly higher and gives it that 3d uh, look so you can add an elevation of 4 dp so that will give it a shadow at the bottom and obviously you will be thrown uh, a warning saying that this is only used in api level 21 and higher what that means is only newer versions of the phone will be able to show you that shadow you need not worry about that so hopefully all of you are on the latest version okay so so we have created a single item so in the next video we'll be seeing how we can define the different parameters for each of the elements here and uh, you know then uh, give it to the custom adapter so that it can load it into the recycler view and after that we'll be assigning the uh, on click listeners which will be taking us to the individual activities of those appliances all right so i'll be doing that before i end the video i just uh, want to answer one of the other things that was mentioned in the first video so you are asking me what are what are different things that i need to you know build the hardware part right so i'll be adding all those uh, hardware links in the description below so you can go ahead and check it out and maybe uh, buy them uh, uh, prior to the hardware video so that you can be ready for that so that is that and uh, if you like this video so make sure you give it a big thumbs up also do not forget to subscribe so that you do not miss out on any of my future videos and also do not forget to use the handle askdk to ask me any questions which uh, you know you want me to answer during the video when i have free time during builds as i mentioned and uh, yeah so see you guys in the next video and until the next video thank you guys for watching happy learning